Welcome to another Windows 10 optimization video. However, this time it's going to be a deployment ISO that you can build from the ground up yourself. So say for instance, you're installing Windows 10 for a friend and you're used to optimizing Windows, you can cut out all those optimization steps from pretty much pre-setting it up before you make that Windows 10 install. Now we recently did a video on this with a Windows 11 install where we've also released our own image that you guys can download, save yourselves a heap of time. I'll put the link to that video up there, which also has the link for that Windows 11 custom ISO. But pretty much with these videos, we do all the optimizations that we've done. Say for instance, we've released the Windows 10 recent optimization guide. We do all those steps before we make the Windows 10 install. So all those steps are already done by the time we install Windows. And it can save a lot of time if, for instance, you're installing systems for friends or on a new gaming PC for yourself or multiple different applications, even if you're deploying things as well. So you can customize Windows the way you want. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial here today. We're gonna to show you how you can do it yourself, but also at the same time, I'll be making my own Windows 10 ISO in today's video, and then putting the link in the description below, taking you guys through all the steps and processes, just like we did with the Windows 11 video. Now, the first thing you wanna do with this is get a program called NT Lite. Now, make sure you go to the main website and download this program. Don't go to any third-party websites. They could have viruses. And another thing is you will also need to go to Microsoft's website and download the Windows 10 ISO. Now you can get a 32-bit version here or both. We're just using the 64-bit uh, version in today's tutorial. And another thing is too, I do recommend once you've got Windows 10 installed, making sure Windows is activated. And today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, I've been working with them for a very long time. Their keys are pretty much some of the cheapest on the internet and they never miss a beat. If you install this, it's going to be tied to your motherboard and then you won't have to ever activate Windows again, at least for that PC, even if you reinstall Windows. So these are one-time OEM key licenses and they last for a lifetime. The Windows 10 Pro key licenses, they work for Windows 11 too. So you don't need to go out and spend extra on a Windows 11 license. And if you use the coupon code BFTYC on checkout, you can save yourself a massive 35% off with this coupon code. So I'll put the links in the description below. Use that coupon code for that discount. You'll get Windows 10 for as little as 15 US dollars. Though with that said, let's move on now with this tutorial. After we've downloaded NT Lite and our ISO file, we can then extract the Windows 10 ISO and copy all the files out of it and put it into a separate folder. And this is important because we need to be able to edit this file in NT Lite. So if we don't take this step, we won't be able to edit our ISO image. So once we've done that, we can then go to open up NT Lite and go to add and then go to add image directory and then also add that as the image directory that we made. So in this case, it's called Windows 10 Extracted and this may take now five minutes. So we're gonna, after we've done that, we're going to load up now Windows 10 Pro and then we are ready to start customizing our ISO. So now we've loaded up our image of Windows 10 Pro, it's time to now start removing and disabling a lot of stuff that we don't need. Now, we go down here to remove components, and first of all, I will say, this is gonna be for the single end desktop user. It's not gonna be for someone who's remote accessing PCs or controlling servers, because I'm pretty sure those people will already know how to make their own custom ISO. This is for someone who just wants to cut out a lot of crap for a single end desktop power user. And in fact, this is even better than the optimization guide in some ways because we can get to the core of the OS and eliminate some of these annoying services before they can even make their way to the final install of Windows. However, the first one we're going to go over here is remove and then go down to this sub tab here or sub menu components and we're going to go to localization. And here we've got the language area where usually we will take off for my own custom ISO afterwards, I'm gonna leave only English and uh, Japanese enable because they're the two languages I use on Windows with programs and also uh, all my essentially graphics user interfaces in these two languages. However, for the purposes of releasing this 
customize so to everyone, I'm going to leave these languages enabled. But if you want to take away all these language packs that you don't need, you can do that in your own custom matter. Now we're going down to multimedia here. And what you'll see here is I've actually already unselected the services that I don't need. And that is share media control panel and also Windows personalization themes and Windows TIFF iFilters. I never use TIFF uh, photo files and I also have never really come into Windows personalization themes. I customize Windows the way I want it to look. For instance, in the previous optimization tutorial, I made the color red, put my own custom background on. I didn't need Windows to do any of that. So I'm getting rid of all the crap and bloat there. So after we're done with that multimedia sub tab, we can then go down to network. And what we've seen here is we've unchecked Internet Explorer. This is one thing I like to do. So we don't need the old school Internet Explorer as I personally use Edge. And then going down here to payments with unselected wallet service as I never use this wallet app with Microsoft. And in fact, I, the only payment services I use on uh, Windows is I put in my details on a website and buy something and it's got nothing to do with the wallet service. So I don't need that. And also now we've got remote desktop active uh, client X. I actually forgot to remove this before, but we're going to uncheck that. We don't need this ActiveX client remote desktop services. So if you are, for instance, going to set up TeamViewer and stuff like that and remote access uh, your computer, you may have to leave some of these services enabled. But we're taking it off because, again, we're single end desktop power users here. We don't need these services. And then we're going to go down to remoting and privacy. And I've taken off here branch cache client or branch cache client, depending on which language, uh, if you're in the US, you're going to see cache, branch cache client, and also file server resource manager. And then we're going down here to multi point connector, as well as taking off remote assistance. And that's after that sub menu is all finished, we can then go to system. Now, in those remoting and privacies, I forgot to add, these are services that are mainly, as we read the descriptions here, they're mainly used for people remote, uh, using remote services, which in this case, we're not using any of that, and we're going to free up some um, programs here, especially file server resource manager. That one actually can use up some um, uh, some uh, utilization of your PC when it's on. So you'll notice after you get this ISO, if you were to compare a fresh Windows 10 install from Microsoft's website versus this one, you're gonna notice the CPU utilization will be lower on this custom ISO install. And if you're a single end desktop user, you're probably gonna notice after the fact that it's also going to be snappier and et cetera. But let's move on now to system down below here. And we've got here ease of access themes. And again, it's back to that personalization thing. I don't need Microsoft to customize my windows. So I'm gonna take this ease of access themes off. And then we've also got here uh, application virtualization. Virtualization is different from remote servers in that you can essentially set up a virtualization uh, OS and install things via that virtualization. For instance, if you don't trust an application and you want to test it out without it affecting your main install of Windows, you can open it up in a virtualization environment. So I do like to leave that on because it can come in handy sometimes. Or if you're really hardcore and you're not going to use that, you're just installing your games, you can take that one off. But I'll leave it on for the um, mass distribu distribution tech, yes, Windows 10 optimization ISO. And then down here, device lockdown, embedded, in, embedded experience. I don't have that enabled. Hyper-V integration services. Uh, this is enhances the Hyper-V virtual machine performance. So uh, we don't, I don't have that enabled again because I rarely use virtualization services. If I do, I'm happy with the vanilla. And then we go down here to mobile PC. Now, if you're using a touchscreen, as it says here, uh, compatibility with touchscreen devices, if you're using a touchscreen PC, manage to leave this enabled. But, but since I never use a touchscreen with my desktop PC, I'm taking this off. And then we're going to move it down here to use a virtualization experience, take that off, and then go down to Windows Apps. And what we're going to do is this Apps sub uh, menu here, we're going to take off all the stuff that we don't need from the get-go. Because in our Windows 10 optimization tutorials, we go through and we uninstall all this stuff. This is going to make it so that all this stuff is uninstalled from the get-go. You can see here, 3D Viewer, Cortana, Feedback Hub. The list goes on. All the useless bloat that Windows installs from the get-go, we're taking that off. Now, in relation to the Xbox, game bar i will leave the xbox app open and that's it so if you want to use xbox in the future or if you use xbox you can have all these enabled but i'm just having it so that okay if i want to use xbox the game app i've got that installed it can install the rest for me if i open that up in windows 
And now after we're done with the remove components tab, we can go down to configure features. Now, if you play Rockstar games, you can leave this one off in our previous optimization tutorial for making a customizer. So we turn this off, but people are saying it's required for Grand Theft Auto 5. So we're gonna leave that on for the GTA 5 players there. But personally, for my own ISO after this video, I'm gonna go turn this off when I make that custom one. And so after we're done with these configure features, we're going down to the configure settings sub menu. And this is easily going to be not just where the majority of customizations on this Windows 10 ISO will happen, but there's also the biggest differences between Windows 10 versus 11 will happen here too. So the first thing we're going to go here to is desktop. And we can see here we've a uh, dark mode for apps. I like this enabled. And then we go down here, we've also got on resume, display login screen, disabled. I don't need a login screen with my Windows uh, 10 install. And then we've got here, show people on taskbar disabled, then taskbar button groupings, never combine. And then taskbar show on all monitors, enabled. And then we're going down here to Explorer. And I believe there is the uh, show search suggestions. We've disabled that as well as show sync provider notifications. We've disabled that and show task view button. So these sync provider notifications, this will be things I believe that relates to uh, OneDrive, which we've disabled anyway. Then after that, we can left click on this little power control here and go to fast startup and that is enabled. Then we can go down to the privacy sub menu right here. So We'll actually quickly uh, quickly close these other sub menus, not to confuse anyone. And then we can go to allow apps access. Now we've disabled a lot of these that we did in the Windows 10 optimization tutorial, but this allows us to disable them before we even get into Windows. So you can see here, we've left on microphone, camera and file system, and the others have been disabled. Now below that, allow experimentation and location services and telemetry, we've disabled all that, as well as automatic installation and hotspot related. Um, services. Now, clipboard history, we are going to turn this on. This is my personal thing. I like the clipboard history in both Windows 10 and 11, as it allows me to uh, copy paste multiple things at once. So it's a very handy feature with the Windows. Hold down the Windows key and press V and you're good to go. Now, below that, we've disabled more contacts and uh, Cortana, other useless things that I personally never use within Windows. Then there's feedback frequency, as well as let apps on users, other devices, open apps and continue experiences on this device. So basically a lot of uh, file sharing and telemetry services are being disabled in this tab. You'll notice there's just a lot to disable in this particular uh, sub menu right here. Now there's also pre-installed apps and pre-installed OEM apps. We are disabling both of those. And then search, allow cloud search and include Bing web results. So those two are getting disabled as well. And we've got find my files because whenever I use the search, I'm always using it to, as we can see here, I'm using it to either find my MP3 or something like that, or I'm using it to find system information. I don't want all this other stuff, uh, web search results and all this other crap coming in my search bar when I'm using this right here. So I've personally customized that to make it just quick, effective. And below that, we've also got some other services, uh, hotspot services and smart screen settings that we're disabling. And then we can go down now to this other sub menu right here on the start menu. And I'm disabling hibernate, restart and sleep for my actual power button. So I like to have this, um, this one right here on default. This is the power button shutdown. So whenever I press the power button on my PC, it's just shutting down. And that's the way I like that. Now below that is the system little triangle here. We can left click this and going through here, there's some services that already have been disabled uh, based on what we previously did with remove components. However, we want to make sure OneDrive is disabled here. I personally don't use this as well as this other remote desktop services here. I've disabled both of these and then storage sense. I'm also disabling these here as well. So they are not going to be running in the background. Now also for variable refresh rate, I've left this on to enabled and then virtualized base security VBS. I'm turning this off and disabling that. Now for Windows Defender, we can go down to here and I'm actually going to disable the non-critical notifications and as well as tamper protection and Windows Defender account uh, protection warning to use a Microsoft account. So we're just leaving basically the security center and the notifications and the base of Windows Defender on. 
and then down to Windows Update. We're going here to Automatic Update of Speech Models Disabled, as well as Automatically um, Update Device Drivers and Icons over the Internet Enabled, and then Delivery Optimization. We have this set to Peering in Group Only, uh, sorry, in um, basically uh, Peering in the Local Network Only, which is the, essentially it usually is the default uh, setting for Windows 10, but we're just gonna make sure in this it is the default setting when we install Windows 10. Now, download updates over meter connection disabled. And then below that, we've got restart the PC as soon as possible when required to install an update disabled too. We can manually restart our PC after a optimization has taken place. So now we've completed that main settings menu. You can see here there was actually quite a lot to go through. We can go on to the next sub menu and that is services where you'll notice in this menu, I have disabled some of these services in the past but I usually install these main culprits here, connected user experiences and telemetry, as well as distributed link tracking client. So these are the two that I like to disable as they're automatic, they're running, but I notice it makes these two services having disabled, disables the telemetry involved with them and makes your see, uh, PC a little bit snappier, even if it's a faster PC. Uh, some people say there is problems uh, using uh, network attack storages. You might want to leave that enabled, but with the NASAs that I've used here in my studio, also in Japan and Australia, never had a problem with this being disabled. So now that we are done with services, we can now go down to the automate unattended, left click this, and then left click enabled up the top here, and then copy to install image, as well as copy to boot image, as well as copy the prompt edition selection. So these three things here are selected. And then also within this uh, sub menu right here, the final install options. We can go down to the out of the box experience and we are going to have the skip Euler page, true and then local account setup false. So we wanna make sure we are getting the option to put in our username for the PC locally and then skip the online account setup true. Now there's also some user and UI language uh, settings you can do here as well if you wish to, um, but we're gonna just turn those off for what it's worth and leave those on default. So when you install your OS, you can choose your own UI language and your own user locale. But for me personally, I'm gonna set it to English, Australia, in Japan. I know it's a little bit of a weird mix. And now after the automate unattended, we can now left click on post setup and then over here, left click add a template and then disable hibernate. And essentially what this does is it frees up SSD space. I don't have hibernation on any of my PCs here on my desktop. Uh, PCs and we have disabled this as well. So this is turned off anyhow. So we've made sure that this service is also disabled too and it's uh, gonna free up SSD space for us. And now after the automate unattended, we can then go down to finish and apply and make sure save the image is checked. The standard editable WIM is checked. You can use high compression, but it can be finicky. So we're gonna give that a miss with today's edition here. Remove non-essential additions. We are going to make sure that's checked there. And then also um, we are going to go down to reapply tasks across additions. So essentially what this is going to make this bootable uh, Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Enterprise, all that stuff is going to be the same configuration that we did for our Windows 10 Pro here today. So that's gonna enable that all across the options. And then our last step here is to then left click create ISO and call it Windows 10. In this case, we're gonna call it Tech Yes Edition 2023. And we are gonna save that on our desktop and that should be okay and good to go. So now with all that aside, we now have a custom ISO with all those optimization settings that we have done in our previous tutorial baked in as well as some additional bloat removed from the get go. So this edition is going to be even slightly better than our previous optimization tutorial that we did for single end users. But the good thing about this is too, is it's already good to go. So if you guys want to get this exact ISO that we made in today's video here, we're going to put the link in the description below. This is the Tech Yes 2023 edition. It's going to be seeded. And um, every time we do this, you guys absolutely love it. And I've actually got to reinstall my system soon too. I'm on Windows 11, but I might just go back to Windows 10 just because I want to directly compare them side by side again in my head 
and just see what it's like going between the two, especially for power using where I'm going from video editing to sometimes playing some games and stuff like that. So this will be awesome in nature and hopefully you guys will enjoy the time savings. And also you've learned a lot in terms of how to make your own custom ISO and things that you don't like and like, you can add in and remove them as necessary. And also guys, before we get on out of here, if you wanna get Windows 10 Pro legitimately activated for as little as $15, we've got today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, in the description below that link. Just click that and then put in that coupon code BFTYC and you'll get a code delivered instantly. It's a single end user license for your motherboard. You'll activate Windows 10 Pro. You can also use it for Windows 11 and it's going to save you a lot of hassle as well as being some of the most best value in terms of getting a key on the net. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.